Welcome back to the channel. Before I get started, I want to thank my newest subscriber above. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. I'm glad to have you. <clears throat> so this desert rose, uh, last year I made a video where I planted it into this pot and I used styrofoam to pull some of the roots apart or at least keep some of those roots apart to make the cardex appear bigger than what it was when the roots were all together. Today, what I want to do is prune some of the branches up here, but I also want to actually pull this desert rose out of this pot and reposition it to a more of a semi-cascading bonsai tree in the future. So it will be, <clears throat> excuse me, it will be a pretty uh, drastic change from a upright growing desert rose to a semi-cascade. So the first thing I'm going to do is just start by pouring some of the soil out of the pot until the desert rose is loose from the pot. Now I haven't watered this desert rose. It's uh, early spring and this desert rose has not been watered since last fall because of the winter dormancy period. Here's my screen to cover up the drainage holes on the pot. It appears that it has grown a lot more fine roots than what it had last year, which would make sense when I planted it into this new uh, soil that's made up primarily, it's about, uh, 70% turfus and 30% composted mulch. I am going to mix a little bit of uh, composted manure in with this soil this time and a little bit of perlite also. But let me just start by looking at the tree. That's how I want it right there. Some of the soil together since the soil that this desert rose was growing in um since it's only been in there for a year this soil is still perfectly healthy uh so i'm not going to uh get rid of the soil that it was growing in. i'm just going to mix some of the new ingredients the compost and manure and perlite in with it now it's still going to be made up of about 80% turfus and the reason why I like turfus so much is it gives a lot of aeration to the roots and that's why this desert rose has so many fine roots thinking something like that will look great. I am going to put this piece of styrofoam back into this, separating these two roots to continue to spread the caudex 
or the roots down there, making the caudex look larger by doing so. Now I'm gonna take my uh, chopstick and work the soil down into the roots, in between the roots so there's not any air pockets. You can see how once I start doing that, the soil starts falling down and going in place and just filling all those voids down there, which is very important. You don't wanna have uh, air pockets in the soil. Now, this desert rose is in bloom. I do, there's probably a 80% chance that I will be losing these flowers um, over the course of the next week after this uh, repotting. But then after a short period of time, I do expect this desert rose to rebloom again once it starts getting watered. Now, even though I haven't watered this desert rose for the whole winter because of the dormancy period, um, this time of the year, I should be watering this desert rose. But since I uh, repotted this desert rose, and I might have broken some of the roots down there, I am going to wait one week until um, uh, before I water this desert rose. And what that will do is if I did damage any of those roots, it will give that root that was damaged a week to callus over before it gets wet. That way that root won't rot. So um, to, later on today, when I'm done here, I will place this desert rose um, on my screen and porch where it's in uh, part shade for the next week for it to recover. Once it recovers, then I will start watering it and then I can put it back into uh, full sun for the rest of spring and going into summer. And I'll show you a picture of what I'm aiming for with this Desert Rose also. If over the next few years I can work this Desert Rose into developing more like that Desert Rose in the picture, I will be very, very happy. Even though I'm not going to water it today, I am going to give it some of my favorite fertilizer, Osmocote Plus, across the top of the soil. It's a slow release fertilizer. Um, every time I water this plant or every time it rains, a little bit of this fertilizer will wash down into the soil, <clears throat> fertilizing the plant over, and it lasts for about six months. And it kind of makes it, uh, easy so you don't have to remember did i fertilize the plant last month did i not do i need to fertilize it this time kind of takes all the guesswork out of it so that's what i have now i am going to prune him There's a couple branches that I have uh, died on this plant, unfortunately, during the winter time. So I'm going to just take those off.
think that's it. Well, one more. And then anytime you make a cut on your desert rose, you should put some kind of anti-fungal, whether it's uh, ground pepper is what I use, or you can use um, something to close that, that cut. Some people use uh, anti-fungal powder. Some people use paint. So that's the tree now. You can see it's grown in a semi-cascading style. Over time, I might prune some of these branches um, here back or even possibly wire them down. Not quite sure yet. But for right now, I'm just going to put this tree back on uh, my porch uh, where it's partially shade. Don't give it any water for a week. Wait one week for those roots to callus over, and then I can start watering it and put it back in full sun. But you can see I drastically changed the appearance of this tree uh, and put it well on its way to becoming a beautiful bonsai tree over the coming years. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I love hearing from you guys, and I will see you guys in the next video.